Welcome to the Type 052 Luhu class ship brief. All right, we're going to begin in the mid 1980s. Uh, the Type 051, the predecessor, uh, is not working out too well. There's a couple of key things wrong with it. One, it takes way too long to get started. Anytime they get orders to go anywhere, they need basically a day's notice so they can get the engines up to speed, up to pressure, and uh, get underway. Well, China wants to fix this, so they start talking to the Americans about new engines. And they sign a deal to acquire General Electric's LM2500 gas turbine engines, which are the bee's knees of any modern warship even today. It's, it's one of the best marine engines out there. It's used widely in the American Navy because we make them. Uh, but we also sold some to China that they used in the Luhu Type 052 uh, destroyers. They also went to France, talked to them about... Um, you know, a sonar system and integrating a combat control system, which they then promptly copied and made their own version of. And so this is the first modern Chinese destroyer to have an integrated combat system and a significant improvement in sonar and variable depth ch sonar capability. Um, they basically dismantled and re built these systems from these other countries. They tried to do that to the LM2500, but they don't have the component parts to build these on their own. So they just stuck with, they were just stuck with buying those from the United States. They were, however, able to reproduce the electronics for the combat control system and other radars and sensors uh, during this time. And so until the refit comes in 2011, uh, this is the ship that we have. All right, let's talk about how big it is. It is a 4,800-ton destroyer. It's 468 feet long, almost 50 feet wide. It can make 30 knots when it's running both those uh, gas turbines spinning the two shafts. It can go about 5,000 miles at 15 knots, which is pretty good range. So this is a one of the longest range ships China has in its inventory right here, right now. That's not... And we have 260 uh, crew members on board. It is a code dog system that's combined diesel and gas propulsion. So what are the diesel engines? Well, those are the MTU 12 valve 1163 TB83s. And those are uh, copies of a German design there that they use. And those run two uh, purposes. They can push the ship through the water, but not nearly as fast as the GE LM 2500s can. But they also turn a uh, electric generator that creates hotel electricity to power all the systems that you see here. So the you can pretty much rest assured that at least one of these diesel engines is always going to be running just to power the ship. And then the if they want to go anywhere above, say, about 12 or 15 knots, they're going to have to fire up the LE or the GELM 2500 turbines to spin those shafts and get you up to 30 knots. Here is a look at its their weapon and radar systems here. So the original version of the Luhu had the Eagle Strike. That's the C801, a uh, very primitive uh, ge first generation Chinese anti-ship missile. Only had a range of about 22 nautical miles. Very easy to defeat with electronic warfare. Um, so the only thing you're gonna be hitting with that is a ship that doesn't have any defense capability. Uh, they do have the octopal launcher on the front, on the bow, just like the Type 051 had. And that has the very short range surface to air missiles that we'll take a closer look at here in a minute. Also on the bow is a twin barrel, 100 millimeter naval gun uh, that you wouldn't want to get in front of. That's the Type 79. Uh, behind those on the superstructure, you have four 37 millimeter tri uh, AAA guns, anti aircraft guns. And on the waist, uh, below the superstructure, but above the waterline, you have two triple torpedo launchers, one port, one starboard. And up on the bow, you have the FQF 2500 ASW rockets. These are the same RBU uh, depth charge style bombs that we saw on the previous destroyer. They just carried them over onto this one. Nothing changed as far as that goes. All right, so one of the big changes, though, is look at this radar. This is the Type 518 Air Search Radar, and it's a straight-up copy of a Western radar that they just built themselves. Uh, but it's long-range, air search, it works, and uh, they stuck it on these two Luhus. And if I haven't mentioned already, they only made two of these. And uh, we'll, we'll get into why that was in just a second. Okay, they also have a Type 347 
GNI band uh, surface search radar for the SSM missiles and to direct the 100 millimeter guns. They have rice lamp radar for the 37 millimeter AA guns and the Castor 2 IJ band for the surface to air missiles that only go about seven miles, very short range. This, they do have an ECM and jamming capability, so electronic warfare capability is uh, a big improvement over the previous destroyer. Uh, they do have hall-mounted uh, variable and variable depth sonar. Basically, it's the uh, SDJ-8, SDJ-9 uh, copies of the um, French sonars. And two, a hangar for two spaces uh, that they can fill with Z-9 Alpha Dolphin helicopters. And here's a picture and profile of the original version before it was modernized and all the weapons on board. So you can see the twin 100 millimeter guns on the bow. Right behind that is that SAM launcher with that box-like reload magazine that's fully erect and extended. Uh, they have the t uh, twin AAA guns uh, behind that. And also, if you look all the way back on the stern, you can see it's on, over top of the helicopter hangar there as well. And amidships, they have the YJ-1 SSM Eagle Strike anti-ship missiles in their in their launchers there. Very old school. There's also you can see the Dolphin helicopter there on the on the rear end. All right, let's talk about this marine diesel or correction, this marine gas turbine power plant. This is a very powerful plant. This, this is a significant improvement over the, the Type 051, mainly because you can get this engine up to speed from a cold, you know, not moving start in 10 minutes. That means you can start making revolutions on the screw in 10 to 15 minutes and getting underway very quickly. With this engine, you can now scramble your navies out of port, just like you would scramble fighters off of an airport. So you can have multiple domains covered uh, in quick fashion if you need to. This is basically a marine version of the TF-39 jet engine. It's used all over the United States Navy and uh, other countries as well use this, including China in this case. So uh, a single one of these will push your ship up to about 25 knots. They have two, uh, one for each shaft, and they're able to get about 30 knots out of this. And the nice thing about it is that it's real easy to replace. You, just, you can just pop these things in and out with a small cut above it in the superstructure. And that's how, they, um, that's how they replace them if they need to. They're also easy to maintain. All right, here's that Eagle Strike anti-ship missile, first generation uh, ship launch anti-ship missile for PLAN. Not very capable, to be honest with you. It's only 165 kilogram warhead will get the job done on most small ships, but it's very easy to defeat this missile electronically. And that's what's going to happen to it if they ever try to use it. It is radar homing that can be obscured quite easily with modern countermeasures and has a 40 kilometer range, about 22 nautical miles. Not impressive, but it's what they had in 1990. Here's the HQ-7 SAM with that octuplet launcher. So it holds eight missiles there. You can see in the picture on the right, that's the magazine reload, fully extended. So they can replace the uh, empty launchers that are in the bow there, in the front, after the missiles are empty. They can just push another one up. Has a range of about uh, 12 kilometers. Uh, what did I say? That was roughly seven miles. Has uh, 24 reloads. Uh, but this this reload process is extremely vulnerable to counterfire. Like if the ship was hit by anything during this, you'd probably lose that, that whole magazine, I would think. But that's how they did it. Oh, and that's something to mention is this is a design that the Chinese came up with. So whenever they're forced to create their own ideas, they come up with Rube Goldberg ideas like this, which is probably why they copy ideas rather than try to come up with their own uh, twin 10 millimeter gun on the bow. This is the type 79 gun. Uh, its new name is the HPJ 33 Bravo. So we'll be calling it that going forward because that's now the naming convention. I don't know why they changed it, but there you go. Uh, this thing was IOC'd in 1980. Uh, it's actually, its predecessor goes back much farther than that. But for this gun here in this configuration, 1980, shoots 25 rounds a minute, has a range of about almost 25,000 yards, and it can shoot high explosive and armor piercing shells. Here's your twin 76 um, or sorry, type 76 twin 37 millimeter anti-air guns. They have four of these, they're radar guided. 
very short range, 4.5 4. kilometers, and is designed to shoot down low-flying aircraft and incoming uh, missiles. Yeah, it does have an auto-feed system, so these turrets that you're looking at don't have people in them. It's all automatic and radar-guided in there. This is the uh, triple torpedo launcher you see on the left. It looks just two over one configuration, correction, one over two configuration. And uh, these are all pneumatically launched. So in the back, which is the opposite side of what we're looking at, there's this metal sphere with a couple handles on it that you can lock in place. And so whenever they hit the button to launch it, it takes that sphere that's about the size of a basketball, maybe a little bit bigger, and the, all that air in there comes out the tube, pushing whatever's in the tube out the front, which is the end that we're looking at. Inside there's going to be 324 millimeter torpedo that is seawater activated. So once it splashes in the water, it begins swimming in a pre-designated search pattern. On the right hand side, we can see the FQF 2500 ASW rocket bomb. This is essentially the Chinese version of the RBU. And uh, this is unchanged from the previous destroyer. So they made no changes in this. A very simple, you know, point and shoot depth charge. Here we have a great look of what the uh, sonar dome looks like to give you an idea of where it's located and the size of it compared to the rest of the ship. And on the aft end side, you can see the, the winch and the storage drum of the VDS sonar. So the sonar sits back there beneath the helicopter on the landing pad, and that's where it's stowed. And it's just reeled in and out with a, with a large cable. This is a better picture of it. You can see it has a cross shape rudder on the back. It has no method of propulsion. It's simply dragged behind the ship. But with little control wings on the VDS itself, it can change its own depth as it's being towed by the warship. And here is that large uh, F5 or uh, Type 518 radar. This is a long range. Uh, air search radar, and it is arguably the most capable radar on, on this ship. Uh, the ship is, uh, part of it in the future will be designated for a command and control and become a command ship. Part of that reason for that decision is this radar. It's, it has a very long air search capability. Here's the Harbin Z-9 Charlie ASW helicopter. Um, these helicopters are going to be used frequently in all the ships that we're talking about. So this one IOC to 1990, 300 kilometer per hour speed, has multiple sensors, including forward looking infrared, expand surface search radar, and of course, dipping sonar. It can hold up to two torpedoes, but often doesn't. Sometimes it goes with one torpedo and uh, either nothing on the other side to save weight or um, you know, it could be another uh, a sensor or something. All right, 1997, uh, we had some ship visits. This ship came to, uh, I believe it was Pearl Harbor, and we were able to get tours on board with cameras, and we took pictures of everything, and we were shocked at what we found. This entire ship, even though it was assembled in China, is essentially a French destroyer with American copied uh electronic warfare suites and, and, and sensors, radars and stuff. So a lot of French components and full systems in the case of the sonar system and a lot of American components. And, and some of those American component components were licensed, like the engines, of course. Um, but a lot of, you know, chips and hard drives and things that can, you know, computer systems that connect these sensors together were all based on Western in general technology. And that's what made this ship very vulnerable because these ships IOC'd in, well, they began to be constructed in 1990. And that means that the agreements for these parts, specifically the uh, GE engines, were signed in the mid to late 1980s. Well, what happened in 1989? Well, Tiananmen Square happened in 1989. And so the West, including the United States, put sanctions on China after the massacre at Tiananmen Square. And they could no longer get parts for their weapons, their radars, their engines. They couldn't even get the engines anymore. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, they only made two of these ships. It is essentially a French destroyer with some American equipment on board. And French or France and uh, America weren't selling the components to China after Tiananmen Square. So... In 2011, China's on its own now. They got to do a refit modernization or scrap these. They decided to do a modernization. 
and uh, they change the surface to surface missiles first because they know the uh, HY, the old uh, Eagle Strike is not going to cut it anymore. Uh, it's, it's just going to be defeated if they shoot it at anybody that has got a decent countermeasure system. So they increased the number of ship missiles to 16 and put on the YJ-83 anti-ship missiles. And these are modern. They're still subsonic. They're basically exosets or harpoons, but they're much more capable and not as vulnerable to jamming and uh, you know countermeasures as the first generation was. Uh, they also have two uh, HPJ type 730C whizzes. This is the close-in weapon system um, that replaces that 37 millimeter AAA guns. Uh, we got a nice picture of those coming up for you. We have a SATCOM antenna uh, is a big mast uh, astern that we'll show you here in a second. And we have uh, two Type 75 12 cell 24 millimeter ASW rockets. So these are the new, you know, RBU rocket bomb units. And here is the YJ-83, also known as the C-803 anti-ship missile. This thing ILC'd in 1998. Uh, NATO name is CSS N for Naval 8 missile. Has a 180 kilometer range, significantly increasing the range over the original design. A little bit larger warhead that's also semi-armor piercing for modern warships. And a turbojet and speed is Mach 0.9. That's pretty much unchanged. And... Uh, it looks like a you know a version of something between a Russian caliber, a French Exocet, and a little American harpoon in there on the booster side, the rear end of things. Uh, they basically took ideas from all three countries and made their own uh, anti-ship missile. This thing, however, is much more capable. And if you don't pay attention, if you don't have your you know your jammers on, uh, this thing would hit the target if it was unopposed. Here's that Type 730 Sea Wiz. This is the modern Sea Wiz on all Chinese warships now. It's a Gatling gun design. It is both optically infrared and radar guided. It can also be manually controlled there. And uh, so they ripped off the four 37 millimeter mounts and put on two of these. Both of these are aft over the helicopter hangar. Matter of fact, I got a picture for you here. Uh, you can see right there on the helicopter hangar where they got rid of that. They also got rid of that huge 518 radar that you can see just forward of the two sea whizzes. Uh, forward of that next to the SATCOM satellite system that gives this ship command and control capability for a fleet. You can manage a fleet. They often use this as a command ship now. The two Luhus that have been modernized uh, can coordinate multiple at-sea vessels um, and Part of that is using this communications antenna array at the very top is a satellite communication array uh, used for communication back to the mainland. All right, so YJ-83s, uh, oh, and other sensors I should mention as well. Those are the, uh, the anti-ship missiles. They have 16 of these now facing port and starboard, 8.8 uh, .8 starboard, uh, very capable, big improvement. Uh, they, they maintain the, the YU-7 torpedo launchers, three of them. The torpedoes are better, but the launchers are the same. And on the bow, you have the same. You've got the uh, Type 79 Bravo twin gun, 100 millimeters a piece uh, for each of those barrels. And that missile launcher, the HQ-7, uh, remained. Um, in future builds, they're going to eventually go to a, a VLS-type system. But uh, the biggest Achilles heel on this thing, I believe, is the air defense. Uh, the HQ-7, if it does hit anything, it's going to be basically point defense. It's such short range. It's ridiculous. And that magazine that they have right behind it full of explosives is not well located. So uh, any damage forward on this is going to decimate its ability to defend itself from, um, from, from, from air attack. That's for sure. But it carries a, a pretty significant punch with those uh, 16 anti-ship missiles. That is no joke. So... This is after modernization, and this happened in 2011, uh, this modernization did. It's, it's, it's a much better ship. And both are in service today. And there you go. That's my final thoughts on this is a uh, big improvement. Yeah, much better ship than the Type 51 was by far. So got to give them you know, credit where credit's due is they found a way to integrate Chinese technology, rip out a lot of that technology that they had copied from the United States and France and put in Chinese integrated systems, including a satellite communication uh, suite system and the ability to coordinate an entire fleet. 
on this ship that is, uh, you know, made in 1990. So, so good for them. Uh, but again, the reason why they only built two of these originally is because that Tiananmen Square led to sanctions that halted um, trade that allowed them to get the parts to build more. And if it wasn't for that, you know, they might have built, you know, who knows how many of these. Um, but there's only two remaining. They're both active duty. And if you serve anywhere in the Western Pacific, you might come across one of these. Yeah, they, they, they do deploy. All right. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Luhu. So I want to say thank you, everybody, to uh, Scott Borg and Fraser Disney for being part of the executive branch.